All right, hello everybody, welcome back. And today we're gonna use the female body visualizer just to get a perspective on uh, the perfect female body throughout history. A couple of days ago, I made a video where I just went on a weird tangent doing research in the internet of things. And some of you guys mentioned in the comments that you enjoyed it. This right here is the predicted female body. This system uses uh, advanced mathematical formulas to uh, depict what the average female body is like in the US. And this is this is it. This is it right here. Now, obviously, women are not made out of rubber and they're not blue, but uh, this still gives you kind of like an idea of uh, the current female body. We're going to see how the body evolves through time. Oh my God, what the hell is this? <laughs> Yeah, we can go in some crazy directions here, but we're gonna try to keep it realistic. This obviously right here is, um, oh my god, what is happening to her chest? Jesus Christ, let's just go back to normal. Jesus. Anyway, I've been doing some research here. I never want to see that again. I I'm still processing what I saw. Uh, I've been doing some research here, and we're gonna try to depict the perfect body through history. So here we have the list. I don't know, this is some random website. It says how women's perfect body types changed throughout history. Here we have the Paleolithic era. Now, I'm pretty sure we can totally depict this. We can totally replicate this in our super advanced body visualizer. I'm not gonna lie, this looks like a popcorn. Okay, the height is very small. Let's go like this. Oh, yes, that's starting to look like a popcorn right there. Now, the chest is really, really out there. It's like really huge. The waist is also out there. Actually, I think this is pretty much it. I think that's all we had to do. Oh, my God, what the hell? So what they're saying is that in the Paleolithic era, they found a minions attractive. This is essentially a minion. You can change the exercise as measured by hours per week. Listen, you can do you can you could do 19 hours, 20 hours per week of exercise is not gonna change anything for this body type. You might as well just re-roll at this point. Now, it's obvious that us being men of culture of the 21st century, we're not gonna find this attractive. We are not freaking cavemen. So this is not gonna be attractive to us, but back in the day, and when I say back in the day, I mean like hundreds of thousands of years ago, this right here was a runway body type. This right here was the apex Bruh. of beauty. That's right, having your butt in the middle of your back was considered attractive. Oh my god, if you look at this from above, it kind of looks like this super ugly fish that became a meme. Listen, I'm not here to body shame anyone, I'm just replicating what history tells us. And this is obviously extremely accurate, as this was posted by thelist.com, a very reputable source. Now, here we have ancient Greece. Women featured largest hips, full breasts, and not quite flat stomach. We can do that. Plato gets the credit for originally endorsing the Greek-born golden ratio as the bar by which all beauty is subconsciously judged. I guess at the end of the day, we're nothing but geometric shapes. So it makes sense that geometry and beauty have like some sort of like connection. But anyway, we're not here to think deep, as you can see. All right, so they say women should have large hips. So let's go with this one. I'm pretty sure that's not it. Jesus Christ. Now, this would be an average looking woman in the Renaissance, I guess. However, we want the perfect ideal body. So they put a lot of emphasis on the hips. So let's do that. I feel like this section right here is like a defense mechanism at this point. Now, this article clearly says full breasts. So we're going to go with that right there. Now, I don't know why this kind of like triggers me a little bit. This game as if it's a game. This page, this system sort of like thinks there's a correlation between the chest and the height. Like if I go like this, it just becomes this amorphous piece of uh, Play-Doh, I guess. I just want to retain the height. Is that not possible? Oh, yes, it is. Look at that. There you have it. The perfect body for the Greeks. Can you guys see the golden ratio in this perfect body right here? Just the symmetry of it. Listen, forget about the Vitruvian man. Don't make me laugh. This right here is the perfect human shape. Now, here we have another different era, the Elizabethan era, which is funny because I can't, I can't tell where she stops and the couch begins. It's like she blends with the furniture. It's so weird. According to one Harvard paper, a woman with a face full of makeup was an incarnation of Satan. Oh my God. Oh man, thank God. The scientific method has really made some uh, <clears throat> advancements 
since this time. Remember when Harvard said women with makeup were an incarnation of Satan? A little Satan spawn? Now here we have the 1920s. It says, since they were gaining a taste of men's power, the ideal woman's body became a more boyish figure. For the first time, the curvy, fertile look was completely out. All right, I got you, boys. There you go. It says the curvy figure was out. So hips all the way down, <laughs> no chest. Can you tell whether this is a woman or a man? You, you cannot, you cannot tell. In the 1920s, this oh, is the perfect body. In fact, let's just go all the way down in weight. You know, the more starved you wear, the more attractive. This genuinely looks like a piece of bacon that was left on the pan for a little bit too long, all crisp and burnt. <laughs> all right, there you have it, 1920s done. The 50s and 60s, that is the birth of the hourglass figure. So the hourglass figure was sought after and having a large bust was strongly encouraged. As if it's up to you, you know? As if it's a matter of choice and not genes. Okay, okay, full chest, there you go. Hourglass figure. That seems like an hourglass no! to me. But this is basically a Pokemon. It's basically Ditto. Maybe I just took it a little bit too far. Now, I don't know why, every time I change the chest, it also changes the shape of the face. How is that even feasible? Oh my god. <laughs> That's like an inverse A cup, right? Like her boobs are stabbing her heart. This is not actually possible. It's like all her organs just dropped to her legs. It's, it's not possible. Percentage of people overweight, 73% of people are overweight holy jesus christ oh my god we're at 200 pounds i didn't even notice that 80 okay let's go with 80 here that's that cannot be come on this cannot be the average weight how can this be the average weight this thing is broken okay the more i go into this like female body sort of like scene the more psychopathic this becomes like you have different body shapes is this real banana apple pear hourglass it's like a freaking cornucopia here look at this it's like an excel formula what the hell is this are women supposed to just look at this and say oh yes of course that right there is the perfect uh, hip of course the perfect hip ratio the what like based on this yes absolutely you are certainly a pear shape what that seems like an insult to me anyway 36 inches, 24, 32, and 36. Let's go with that. Bust, 36. So chest is going to be 36, 24. There you go. Is this an hourglass? I don't know, man. I guess you need to be a freaking physicist to calculate this. This is freaking harder than rocket science at this point. Oh my god, what the hell was that? Have you guys ever played uh, Resident Evil 6 or Resident Evil 5? When you got a headshot on the zombies, this is what happened. Freaking tentacle just came out. That is the coveted hourglass shape right there. Beautiful. Oh my god. <laughs> Lovely. All right. Well, boys, I think we're going to leave it at that. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.